let us discuss another important concept that deals with waves, known as reflection. Reflection is essentially the ability of waves to hit other objects and bounce back and travel in the opposite direction. So one very common example of reflection is an echo. So let's suppose that a person is standing by a very large cliff and they yell directly at the cliff. So they will create a sound wave, a spherical mechanical wave that will propagate towards the cliff. When that sound wave reaches the cliff, it will bounce off the cliff and travel backward. And this bouncing is known as reflection. So eventually, the person will hear that same sound wave that they produced. And this is known as an echo. So an echo is formed because the wave has this ability known as reflection. So let's examine another example of a reflection. Let's suppose we have a thin cord that is not tied at either end. So each one of these ends of the thin cord is free. So let's suppose we create a single wave pulse on the left side of our cord and this pulse travels towards the right of our cord. Eventually, the wave pulse will reach this end and will bounce back, reflect, and travel in the opposite direction of its initial direction, as shown. So, once again, when a wave pulse traveling through a cord free at both ends reaches one end, it will bounce back and reflect and travel in the opposite direction. So, this is one more example of the ability of waves to reflect. Now let's examine yet another example seen in C. Let's suppose now I take a nail and I nail one of the ends down to a table as shown. So this is my nail in example 3. And let's suppose I create the same exact single wave pulse beginning on the left side that will travel towards the nail. So here's my wave pulse. Eventually that wave pulse will reach my nail and that wave pulse will create a force that will act on the nail. And according to Newton's third law of motion, the nail will exert a force an equal magnitude force, but that force will point in the opposite direction. So our force, because it points in the opposite direction and because it acts on our cord, our wave pulse will be inverted and will travel in the opposite direction. So even though our wave pulse will be reflected, it will no longer travel backward in the upright position. Now it will travel backward in the inverted position as shown. So once again, the wave exerts a force on the nail when it hits the nail. The nail exerts an equal but opposite force inverting our wave and so our wave will travel in the opposite direction as before. So these are three examples of the ability of waves to reflect off of other objects. Now let's discuss some important terminology that we need to be aware of when we discuss reflection of waves. So let's suppose I take a rock and I let go of the rock and the rock hits still water. So what will happen is that rock impacting the water will create spherical waves and these waves will travel outward in all possible direction. So let's suppose we examine only the waves that are in close proximity to our source as shown. So each one of these waves is known as a wave front. So a wave front is defined as all points along the wave forming the wave crest. And the wave crest is simply the highest position that our wave reaches. So these are our wave fronts. Now, if we draw a line that points in the direction of the motion of our wave and which is perpendicular to each wave front, that's known as a ray. So a ray is a line drawn in direction of motion that is perpendicular to our wave fronts. Now, 
Let's suppose we move far away from where the rock hit the water. So we move far away from the source of our wave. What we'll see is the following. These lines, these wave fronts will no longer be curved. They will be parallel to one another. And now these wave fronts are known as plane wave. And once again, if we draw a line that points in the same direction as motion of the wave and which is perpendicular to our plane waves, we get the following purple line. So once again, plane waves are wave fronts that are far away from the source and which have lost all their curvature. Now they're parallel to one another. So finally, let's talk about a law known as the law of reflection. So the law of reflection states the following. The angle of incidence is always equal to the angle of reflection. So let's suppose we have certain wave fronts traveling in the following direction and our incident ray is traveling in this direction. So our wave travels in the same direction as the incident wave. So let's suppose this is some wall, some obstacle. So when our wave hits this wall, it will reflect off the wall. And what the law of reflection tells us is this angle that is made with our vertical axis is equal to the angle that is made with the reflected ray and our vertical axis. So this angle is known as the angle of incidence because it's the angle created by the incident ray and the axis, the vertical axis. And this angle is known as our angle of reflection because it's the angle made with the reflective ray and our vertical axis. So once again, this law states that our angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection.